Hi, I'm Larry from Hagemeister Enterprises, and today we're going to uh, take a look at this 2004 Ford Diesel Power Stroke. Uh, as you know, this this uh, trucks have alternator issues. Uh, this guy has had four or five alternators on this truck at 150,000 miles, and so we're going to take a look at it and see what failed. We have a conversion in our company that we use to convert these trucks back to the earlier style, which is called a 3G. This vintage is called a 6G, which did not have the best track record. Uh, when you look around online, you can see that a lot of owners of these trucks carry spare alternators behind their seat, and they're talking about changing them every year. So we want to take a look at this truck and see if it's charging and, and what's going on. So let's look at the uh, batteries and see what they look like first. So before we even check the charging system, look at these battery connections. And I would advise this to anybody, if you go pulling into somewhere and want your alternator checked by a parts store, whoever it may be, you can't even effectively check it with it. Look at this. This has got to be fixed and cleaned. We're going to clean these battery connections first, get the battery serviced, and that battery is just as bad. We're going to clean them up, get them serviced, and then we'll check the alternator. So this is a product that we use uh, to clean and service these batteries. One thing that people uh, kind of believe is that baking soda, oh, I put baking soda on the battery. Well, the trouble with baking soda is it just neutralizes the acid. The acid has already done its, its effect here and, and growing corrosion. What you really need to do is clean it. And I recommend any kind of a cleaner, you know, 409, fantastic, any, any of those cleaners to spray the battery down, keep the battery washed, that will stop the corrosion on the batteries. We're just gonna start cleaning these things and, uh, and get them cleaned up. But again, if you use the baking soda, it, it just neutralizes, it doesn't wash anything away. And this here is eating the green stuff up right as we spray it on here, that's what we wanna do. I'm gonna do this a few times and rinse the battery off. Don't be afraid to rinse your batteries anytime. You change the oils, wash the batteries. That's what it's for. This, this product we have here works really well to clean them connections. So as you can see, we've got the batteries serviced. We've uh, cleaned and, and uh, the terminals, wire brushed them. We've taken the uh, leads off. We've checked the batteries. The batteries are okay. Uh, and you can see that the blankets are on the batteries, this one and that one. Those blankets are to keep the battery cool. Uh, we call it thermal runaway. When the blankets are missing, uh, the fan is normally not running under the hood because it's shut down for, for uh, gas mileage, fuel mileage. And so they cover these blankets, or I'm sorry, they cover these batteries with blankets to keep them cool. That's what it's for. And these blankets are in place, so that's the biggest help to keep these batteries cool. So I've got my voltmeter test light grounded here. We've got current in our batteries. They're, the current reads a little bit low because I have the key on because we want to check our connection here and see if that that's got power. So we got battery power on one side and the other side we got key on power. The green with the red tracer is your key on connection. The center pin is dead on this particular system. So we do have key on, the alternator should work and then we got battery power here and then also on the back of our alternator, I'll probe through the rubber there, we got current there, and that connection's tight. So let's start it up and see if it'll charge. So here's a plug-in voltmeter that I recommend. It's got a couple of USB ports, but these trucks, a lot of them have no way to tell whether you're charging or not. They have gauges in here, but nothing is a voltmeter. And even the trucks that do, do have a voltmeter gauge, there's no numbers in between. It just says liar, low or high, and you're guessing about it anyway. So let's turn on our key and see what we got with that. Um, all kinds of lights here. We got no, I don't see a battery light. That could be a problem. So let's start it up and see what we got. So I don't see a battery light on the dash, and I didn't see one on with the key. But we do have key power because our alternator has got power. So as you can see here, it's telling you that it's low, 11 and a half volts. 
but we want to be patient because these diesel trucks a lot of times they don't let the alternator charge until the engine runs for a while so that the glow plugs will quit cycling and after about 30 seconds to a minute it should be charging so we'll just give this a minute and see if it if it comes up on charge it doesn't look like it like this uh, but again I highly recommend these because going down the road you can leave that plugged in around the clock it, t it takes no current when you get in your truck you can see what the voltage is before you even start it uh, other than that we have we have no way to know if they're charging so it doesn't give me any indication that there's a problem anywhere there's no check gauges nothing on and the typical driver would go down the road and just drive it until it quit because there's no indication we don't know and then it starts getting sluggish and then dies this truck uh, truck has 158,000 and again I think he said four or five alternators he's he's tired of tired of changing alternators so I'm going to consider this alternator dead because we're still not charging and it's been probably 30 seconds to a minute and that's what he was complaining about now I will say this the charge light did not come on so usually that's an indication when it's plugged in and it does have current that the rotor is open in the alternator that's what that's directly tied to so if the rope rotor is open circuit then it it won't turn that charge light on and it'll just keep going until it runs out of voltage so I think we need to get this in the shop and get that alternator off there There, almost rubbed through. You really want to watch that so you don't rub through to the frame of your alternator. So this is the alternator we, we removed. It's a 6G, which means a sixth generation from Ford. It's a smaller framed alternator than this one. These are about 100 amp, 110 amp, somewhere in there this alternator is 130 amp now because of the track record of these having such a high failure rate over the years of these trucks and everything you look at online it, it you know again people are carrying a spare with them we went back to the 3g version this is called the third generation and this was a good 130 amp alternator had a great track record so we sell a conversion that brings you back to this alternator so that you don't have to keep putting this one on so the difference is ours has a different plug the regulator is a different plug than this but we sell a harness that goes with it to for you to be able to plug your vehicle right into it and everything will work fine now when we were checking the plug on the truck I need to mention that the yellow wire on the truck is the battery sense wire the regulator needs that sense wire to know where to set the voltage if that current is compromised in some way on that truck this battery power on that plug-in on the truck the regulator will search where to set the voltage so in our conversion what we do is we go ahead and sense it right off the battery post so that the alternator knows is getting current right off the regulator is getting current right off the alternator to know where to set the voltage this one here is 130 amp and this one here is a 200 besides selling it this way we also have a one wire version this is a, again a 200 amp and basically you would not need any plug whatsoever just hook up your battery hot wire and and it'll do everything for you this is a 200 amp 130 you can get them either way 130 amp or 200 amp in a one wire configuration or we can put this plug on this and you can utilize the vehicle plug-in but again this is a bigger framed alternator just like this you can see the size of its bigger so the purpose for these bushings these nylon bushings 
is when the alternator is mounted on the driver's side, the saddle is not quite big enough for the larger framed alternator, and this hits the bottom of the saddle. So we put these bushings, comes with the kit, and you bolt the alternator down. Don't have to change the belt, none of that. All of it works good. The bolts are long enough, and it brings it up so it won't hit here in the saddle. On this truck that we're working on today, it has the alternator on the passenger side, which does not need these bushings because the saddle is big enough to accommodate this style of alternator. But we sell this kit because we just, we just like to get them fixed. And, and these alternators, the guys are so frustrated, and I, and I don't blame them for carrying a spare and changing it every year. And, and, and uh, we just think this was a better design, had a better track record to get 130 amps factory size, and then of course there's a 200 amp here. Okay, we've got the alternator installed. Here's our harness from the truck. Here's a harness from our conversion plug. Keep everything kind of out of the way. When you plug this in, you got to make sure you get a nice click. There, nice click. And we're going to tie this off. And I should mention that this conversion doesn't alter the vehicle at all. If you ever wanted to go back to your original system or that original 6G alternator, you can do that because you're not changing anything but adding our conversion and you're not modifying anything on the vehicle. So it works pretty good. So let me get this uh, zip tied off and then we'll... Okay, key is on. We've got a battery light now. We didn't have that before. And it should be mentioned that the battery light has absolutely nothing to do with the battery. It's a picture of a battery, it's your alternator, it has nothing to do with the battery. But in this case, now the way this truck is built, we do have a battery light. So the weight light has went off, so let's see if it's going to charge. Let's watch our voltmeter. The charge light did go out, the battery light. Now let's watch our voltmeter voltage popped right up. There was hardly any delay whatsoever. So it's working fine. Well, it looks like this one's all fixed. Uh, we have a saying in our shop, uh, we don't like to work on stuff, we like to fix it. And with that other style of alternator, and what I see online, I just, I, it's just a constant thing of changing that alternator. So this one's all fixed, we got a happy customer, and this is the way battery should look, and this is the way it should charge. So one final test we like to do on these is, is uh, using a temperature gun. Very handy. Uh, the alternators, have two phases. They have the field circuit and the diode and stator circuit part of them. Two phases. So two separate circuits. So if there's a diode or stator problem, the alternators run extremely hot. And of course we know this one's working good, but that's a good time to run a temperature on it. So I'm going to start the truck, put electrical load on it, we're going to see how warm the alternator gets. And again, if there's a problem, the alternator would get extremely hot. You couldn't even hold your hand on it. So let's start it up and see what the temperatures are. So here's a voltage test here. 13.9, 14 volts. We've got everything on. The heater's wide open. The lights are on. We've got a pretty good electrical load, or at least as much as we can on the alternator. So that's a good temperature. 
even when you come into the windings of the alternator, they're still not too hot. Like this, if it's over 200 degrees of climbing, you either got really dead batteries or the alternator is just no good. 